Hi, Judy. Hi. Um, all right, so I've been thinking that maybe it'd be interesting to see what would happen if Bring It In were shorter. Like maybe an hour is too long. Maybe it would be more dense if we just made it like, like 30, 40 minutes. Oh, that's we why I had a natural experiment today. That's why I didn't record the first 30 minutes. <laughs> Don't worry. You're welcome in advance for this experiment. So we lost a little recording. It's fine. The only unfortunate thing is that like today's show, we happen to number <laughs> the questions all the way through. So it's like super uneditable. Um, it's so just the to keep everyone question, on their toes. It's fine. Keep my toes. It's fine. Just as, so this is our note to you, dear viewers, of bring it in that we structure the show around 26 number questions and you're going to pick up around number 10. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. The you're gonna best this questions are at the end anyway, right? The best ones are always at the end. Yeah. Sure. There you yeah. go. That's all. Enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> yep. Um, will the Bucks own the regular season again? I think so. I think so. I think that they're going to be, Bud's got this system. He, he's got cheat code for the regular season. He knows how to do it. He's yeah. proved it many times now. He knows the formulas that work to win the regular season. Number one seed, top two seed. And I think they'll be really good. I think Giannis is going to be on a man on a mission again. I mean, he could win three MVPs in a row. He's incredible, right? And um, maybe he's out of the three-point shot more consistently. And then the holiday bump is is not insignificant to me. The holiday bump. Holiday. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Every year we talk about this. It's the it's the year to play deep. Play deep into your into your roster. Rest people, and they never do. <laughs> Is this the year? Is this with, with the COVID and the 72 games and the dense schedule? Is this the year that a deep team will prosper by playing deeper into the bench? I feel like it should be. Yeah. Uh, the question is, who is that team? We talked about Portland. Uh, the Clippers are deep. Portland's deep. Uh, Denver's deep. Um, the rich get richer that way. What would be interesting is the uh, yeah. shouts to Madonna. <laughs> the, the interesting thing is can some of these weaker teams benefit from playing 12 players every game and uh, uh, denying more inbounds plays and picking up 94 feet all the time, uh, going young, staying young, and, and winning because you're playing teams on back-to-backs and three games in four nights and stealing those wins. Uh, I'd love to see that. Um, I don't know who – I haven't looked deep enough in the, to see who could do that. The Raptors are deep too. Uh, and so I think they'll benefit. Hopefully they'll play a lot of guys and they'll benefit from it. It's yeah. I mean, the teams that could do it is very different from the teams that have yeah. the mentality to do it. I think Lillard led the league in minutes last year or close. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? So like being able to go, uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, I'm not holding my breath for anybody to do it. My prediction is nobody does it, but yeah. uh, Nick nurse, pretty experimental. Maybe he'd do it. Yeah. Um, and, and his best player is Kyle Lowry. Who's old and, Siakam uh, uh, is young enough to play a lot, but yeah, it'd be smart for him to do it for sure. Uh, uh, it, but you have to do it. You have to commit to it all year because the idea would be we're resting, we're resting, we're resting. Ooh, we're playing a team, third game, four nights, second game or two back-to-backs in five nights. We're going to win those games just because they're exhausted. And now you got to win some of the other games that they're not going to be as tired, but some of these more talented teams can still do that. I would believe uh, the research that like five max efforts in two weeks is the most you can do without deteriorating. And I would just schedule everybody on the team that way. So nobody plays six times in two weeks. Yeah. And then you'd have a bunch of weird lineups, a bunch of stuff. And by the end of the season, your stars would be running a hundred percent full speed, jumping, cutting, being aggressive. And you'd have all these bench players. Someone's going to be gold, right? Right. Yeah. Randy's got a problem there. Ra- Randy yeah. is setting us up for our next That's- question. That's perfect. Uh, question 12. Will the Knicks win 25 games? Do they want to? <laughs> you could argue the second one first. I'm not sure they want to based on what they've done in free agency. And I know that there is discussion about, um, well, at least they didn't do any bad deals. But uh, let, let's say this about New York. I don't know if they win 25 games or not. Nor do I know if they want to. But they, they have an excuse to be bad. And so if you're going to be bad, so what are you doing? You got to invest your resource in development. You've got to, RJ Barrett needs to be a player. They have not made some moves that make us think they'll do this, but let's just move that aside. Uh, uh, are they going to move on to Kevin Knox? Or are they going to try to actually help him be a better basketball player? 
A year ago, we wrote an article about, excuse me, those two guys. And to me, Knox needed to be a four man. You're just a four and keep it simple. And uh, RJ, you're a small forward. Keep your game simple. I think they failed that test as players and as franchises. Uh, but if either one of those two guys can really make a step forward, and Mitchell Robinson, then at least they have something to look forward to down the road. I'm not, I'm not sure they'll, until they do it, it's hard to believe they will, but they do have new management. Let's, let's hope for the best. Uh, what is the floor and what is the ceiling for the Brooklyn Nets? Yeah. I think the floor is pretty low, like below playoff. If, if, um, if Durant isn't what we hope he is, I just think it's going to be a mess. They have some talented players still. Uh, I mean, they, they look what they did last year. They were interesting. Uh, Spencer and Levert, right. And, and Jared Allen inside and Joe Harris. They're a team that can play a lot of guys, but they're not going to do it because they have Durant and Kyrie. Um, uh, I think it could be, I love Steve Nash, but he is not sometimes dictators. We know this from a political point of view. Sometimes they actually are the better alternative. They're never the better alternative. They seem the better alternative in times of crises because they can control everything. Right. And that's not Steve Nash. I'm glad that's not Steve Nash. But if things go a little bit off kilter because of the Durant Kyrie issue, uh, I don't know if he'll be have the, the ability to weave them all through it. He might. Uh, that's on the players. I, I think that's on the players more than Nash. They've got to grow up and deal with what they're going to have to deal with because they've got to show they, they chose to be in this mess, which is a good thing sometimes. Bosch and LeBron and Wade chose to play together. When people are freaking out that they can't, we were at ESPN then. I just never had any worries. Number one, I thought they would be able to figure it out in part because of their friendship. Well, Kyrie and Durant chose this. And so I think their ceiling can be, you know, in the fifties, well, 72 games. So maybe 50 games, like they could be good. They have a lot of talent on their team. Um, But I think they have the biggest ceiling floor in the league. Yeah. The biggest disparity, you know, it's just so it's so parallel to Jason Kidd taking over as a coach. They're completely different people, but this like unproven point guard uh, taking over a hastily assembled big budget roster in Brooklyn, like been there and, you know, but we know that a lot of ways it can go awry, right? And the stories of how that team broke down was like, you know, just poorly run meetings and Paul Pierce is upset that they didn't like enforce the rules properly and get the, whatever, and on and on, like, hopefully that doesn't happen, but it could happen. All right, we gotta keep moving. Um, are the Raptors and Celtics going to surprise us again? yes i mean I, I guess i was gonna say it would it be surprising if they were excellent i think we kind of they're already good right right so people would go down on boston this year right because yeah. they lost hayward and uh we know what people are saying about the raptors because they just changed out their centers i'm a little higher on the raptors than i am boston maybe i'm stupid i probably am but um i'm just i just feel like siakam has got more to gain still They've got all these young players that find ways to continue to get better. Toronto has been, we should not be surprised. They keep having a new guy break out in a sense, right? Uh, they're going to be more athletic than they were last year. Uh, Abaka is a big loss for sure. But um, I, I just think that they also have cheat code a little bit. Like Nick Nurse is as good as we have in the game. So, and he has no pride. He'll do whatever it takes to win. And I love that about him. It's a compliment. Uh, I love Brad Stevens too. I do think, Tatum and Brown can get better. They're going to have to get some real production from players that have not been so productive before. Some of their young guys, Grant Williams last year, they had three draft picks this year in the first round. They need to get better. Um, but they're going to be very good. I just don't know if they'll be great. I, I still think they're a year away. Daniel, Daniel Tice is a, is a guy that can you know lead them and block shots and make threes. Uh, they're a team that also, I still think there's a deal coming for them. Because they, mm. they know the window's open with Kemba and uh, and Brown and Tatum. I, I see something happening with them. Like what? Yeah, some kind of deal for for some upset guy. Mm -hmm. JJ Redick, right? Uh, Eric Bledsoe. Like, there's going to be people available, right? Um, the one thing we know, Henry, is no matter what the salaries are, teams find a way to make a deal. Mm -hmm. And they've got Boston. They're not going to trade the big three, but they've got They've got some assets with three first round picks and all of that to, to throw in to get some players, to get a player 
to to fill a need that, that clearly after two months is showing mm -hmm. whatever that is. Okay. Um, are Jokic and Murray a top tandem that could lead the Nuggets to beat the LA teams? Well, they did it last year, right? So uh, I think so. I, I, I watched Denver so closely last year from day one of their postseason games against Utah. And, and Jim, as we've talked about on the show and I've written about the difference between knowing the path and walking the path. I feel like both Jokic, I think Jokic should learn to walk the path in the regular season and losing weight helped. And I don't know what he looks like now. I've seen no pictures. I mean, imagine him like Hercules at 7'2". That'd be cool. Um, <laughs> prob probably not ha what happened. Murray learned it. Murray's always been up and down. We saw a different focus on him in the postseason and only fatigue defeated him in some cases. He just got really, really tired. Uh, I, I'm not a big, been a big Murray fan. And based on what I saw in the postseason, his shot making ability was breathtaking. And if he can keep doing that, which I think he can, they become an incredible tandem. They, I, I, I like Jeremy Grant more than some people have who don't think he'll be missed as much. And I'm not as high on, on MPJ, Michael Porter Jr. as people like Gerard are. And <laughs> I'm, I'm not right. It's tricky to get a, a gut feel that I have in seeing it. They, they're right to be high on him. He, he's a hell of a shooter and a hell of an athlete. I've just not seen the growth mentally that I want to see. That we've talked about this. But he's not going to get worse. It's silly to think he's going to get worse. So, yeah, they become – they're a legit uh, team that could beat an L.A. team all season and be a top two seed and then definitely in the postseason. They're not alone. There's some other interesting teams in the West too. Do I, do I have a little worry watching Jamal Murray where uh, his best and worst quality are the same thing, which is I think that he believes that the best option is him. You agree? That, that's always no. That's always been the worry. Because yeah. I even wrote this a year ago, uh, not a year ago, when the bubble started, because the team had settled in around playing around Jokic. Is Murray going to be okay playing around Jokic? And the answer was no. Jokic got comfortable playing around Murray, but Jokic was still amazing. Yeah, and he and and so I think, I think they've figured that out. Now we'll see over the over the long haul. We'll see, but uh, Jokic had an incredible postseason, as did Murray. That's a very truly encouraging sign for them. Okay, uh, we are up to question sixteen. We're doing pretty well, David. Uh, hats off to you. Question sixteen: If Luca is a top three player in the league, do, oh, this is a very specific question. Doesn't that mean the Mavs can be a top four team? Is that how math works? If you have a top three, you get a top four. Is that I, you know? I didn't do it. Was a, I was writing these in the morning, uh, to make sure we, <laughs> and so I didn't do my research, Henry. Uh, uh, Westbrook won an MVP. His team was not a, a high level seed, but normally you're you know you're you're not always a top four seed, of course. But yeah. when you are one of the best players in the world, you you bring your team up so much, and they of course have Porzingis. But there are people picking him to win the MVP. I'm not. Yeah. I, I don't, we might run an article next week. I haven't looked into it yet. Uh, he's going to be among the few. He's just, I studied Luca a ton last week. He's, he's just incredible. And, and I think that they're improved. So I don't know if you think about top four, my West top four is, is got five teams, then Dallas, the LA teams, Denver, and then uh, uh, Utah. And I just literally went blank. Oh, Portland. Oh, I think, Portland. I think Utah and Portland can be better than Dallas uh, for that top five. The more important question is, because I don't know there'll be any fans in, in these playoff games, who cares? Who cares if you're a four, five, yeah. six seed? It doesn't matter. I don't know there'll be fans in, in, by, until next season, the season after this one coming. So as, as amazing as Luca is, and I do think Dallas is better, uh, it's going to be the, a, a game or two difference, which goes back to our original starting point of talking about COVID. Every game you potentially lose against a team that you probably would beat is going to, if you don't replay it, which I don't know if they will, I don't see, what the, I don't see there's time to replay these games. Uh, that's that's going to be pure luck. Like what separates three, four, five, and six probably is going to be a couple games, and there'll be some team that played 64 games and missed five definite wins in a sense. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, what's going to determine who's, you know, who's in the top four. Um, so wait, if Luke is a top three player, who are the top three players? 
Giannis, mm -hmm. Luca, mm -hmm. always would be Harden, mm -hmm. but not this year. I would I would say Curry in the past. I I can't predict that for him this year. Uh, I happen to think it's Anthony Davis. Mm -hmm. But other people to say LeBron. Other people gonna say Kawhi. Uh, Davis is not a primary ball handler, but the impact he can make on that team, I, I rank him top three. Okay. Um, Harden may still be there. We'll see how bought in it is. Oh, and what if Durant's healthy? What if Durant's healthy? But okay. I got Luke in there no matter what. Uh, question 17, where will James Harden end up? Absolutely no idea. Yeah. People say Brooklyn. That's another one I want Gerard to predict. Uh, uh, I'm predicting pain regardless, as Clever Lang once said, but uh, I don't know where he's going to go. I just don't think it'll be in Houston for long. Yeah. Um, were the 76ers always just short of shooting? Yeah, I do like, um, yeah, I just feel like the vibe there is going to be going to be good. And I've not been a Philly. I did not pick them as a contender last year. Um, uh, once we started playing anyway. And, uh, I, I think there's just a different vibe there. I, I think, yeah, they just have so many guys that shoot well now and Daryl's not going to stop. He'll continue to tweak up what's going on. And me. bless you. And then, yeah. and then we'll see how effective. Doc, I think a new voice is also really good. I, I, the question isn't great. It's not just, it's, it's new. It's short, short of shooting and has Brett Brown been there too long? Yeah. It's hard to be there that long um, and not win. Popovich is different, right? Spo is different. So uh, I think well, Doc he has kind of a hands-on job, right? He was developing the Rishwan oh. Holmes of the, of the world, right? Like, and right. now it's a little different job. Right. I mean, Brett Brown wanted no one to help Markel Fultz but himself as a shooter. Right. And probably Ben Simmons, too. He wanted to do all of it, and that's fine. Uh, it's just hard to do all those things for so long and lose as much as they did for a while. I think Doc is going to come in with an authoritative voice, um, but, a, but a player's guy. And I think I, when I talked about surprise teams, you know, like Miami Heat last year, Philly, to me, is going to be one of them. But by the end of the year, I think they'd be really, really good. Uh, question 19, are the Blazers primed to be top four in the West all year? They're going to fight for it. Yeah, we've talked about them. They're going to fight for it. And the next question about the Jazz, both of them. Yeah. Uh, I'm very high on, on Utah. I love I, – I actually like Tony Bradley, their backup five, uh, but he wasn't nowhere near Derek Favors. Derek Favors will keep it simple. He'll anchor the five spot. They've got some depth. Uh, I don't love Jordan Clarkson, but in the role he plays there, he's been good. Um, their bench was very good regular season, bad in the bubble, but part of that was their coach's fault. Uh, I, the connection that they have is key, right? Let's forget all of this started with Rudy Gobert, Donovan Mitchell, right? Um, on the court success off the court disaster. Uh, but I, I, I don't think they'll start well. If you look at historically what Utah has done, uh, Rudy Gobert has never been good to start the year. They've not been good as a team to start the year. And then they start coming on and coming on. Uh, it'll be the similar here. So they're not, they're going to have to catch up. My guess is to get back in the top four, but they're shooting a lot of, they shot a ton of threes in the, in the bubble. They shot a ton of threes. If they keep doing that, that's encouraging. They have a lot of guys that can shoot. Um, who's the first big money guy to be traded. Mm. You know, when I wrote the question, I just kept thinking Aaron Gordon, mm. 18, 19 million a year. I don't know what they're doing in Orlando. I don't know what their long-term strategy is, but it's not worked out great for him there. I could see, I could see them maybe doing a deal for him. I've not heard that, but um, that's something I want Jared, uh, Gerard to talk about too. Uh, I don't know. I mean, Harden is much bigger money than Gordon, but anything over 10 million a year is big money to me. Yeah. The NBA. Okay. We better be quick here. We get Gerard here. Okay. Um, how many cancellations can we expect in the first month? Yeah. A good amount. We're talking about December 22nd. Uh, there's going to be, you know, multiple, I think. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, like a dozen, I'm thinking. A thousand? A dozen. Oh, a dozen. <laughs> yeah, league-wide. I, yeah. I bet yeah. in a month, that's a lot of games. Well, December um, December, uh, uh, December 22nd to January 22nd. Yeah. You're, you're going through the holidays. I just, yeah, I think it's going to be, I think a dozen's a fair guess. Um, which bad team is about to be good? Yeah, I mean, we, we kind of covered that with Atlanta. They were really bad. Yeah. Um, I don't love Detroit. 
Yeah, I think I think Atlanta is interesting, and the Nets weren't bad. They they weren't great last year. They're obviously they should be better. Uh, and Phoenix, right? These, these teams we've covered, they were bad. And uh, I just oh, and Devin's asked about Minnesota. Devin, that's our next question. Uh, yeah. My thing is like, are the wool? Is this really what the Wolves plan? Is this really what they're doing? Like, are they going to stick with this? I don't love their roster. Yeah, oh. I don't love their roster. Um, I'm worried about uh, Anthony Edwards and Russell, and they brought Rubio back in to play with Russell, which is fine, not ideal. Um, I like their executives; they're smart guys. But uh, and I actually like their coach too. But I'm not convinced they still. I'm not convinced they've really found the plan they're going to follow that's going to take them somewhere good just yet. Yeah, I just feel like the players just aren't good enough. Like it's a weird kind of ensemble cast, uh, but it's not, it's no Ocean's Eleven, you know? Um, right. Okay, 25. Uh, will the Heat make trades? I felt like they have the, uh, well, go ahead. You answer that question. No, I want to hear yours first. I think Pat Riley falls in love with like a certain kind of like dogged character, right? And, um, you know, they were in some of these like rumored trades and, you know, and, and free agency things this summer. Um, I just, as much as I think he loves this team, and I think probably some of those players are untouchable, certainly Bam, but like, I feel like he might go all in for. I don't disagree with you. Some got, James Harden or something. got good young players. I, I, I think they could trade. Uh, if I'm the Wizards, you, you, you got it. You got to try to get Tyler Hero, Kedrick Nunn a first round pick. You're not going to get bam. That may not be enough for Bradley Beal. I, I'm not at all suggesting it will be, yeah. but it's worth a try. It's worth a yeah. try. Maybe get a third team involved. I, I don't see the wizards keeping Beal and wall. And, uh, and so the heat are a team that could make that deal. Who are those Riley guys? Um, trying to think who's like these super dogs around guys. the league. You mean? Yeah. PJ Tucker. Yeah. Big time. He, yeah. He'd be good. Oh, that's a great call. That, that's gonna happen yeah he pj tucker's for sure gonna end up on the heat for sure i don't know Absolutely. why i just came up with that but that was pretty good that's that's for sure yeah yeah he's pat not gonna last he's, he's, it let's doesn't make way. sense anymore let's put it this way pat raleigh is sitting on santa's knee he's asking for pj tucker <laughs> <laughs> for sure. in the holiday spirit all right um question number 26 are there Tyler hero kendrick nunn duncan robinson types in this class of rookies um who we can expect to see emerging from the g league the only, the, I, I don't know that at all. The only name that jumped out at me um, as you were reading this question, because I had no answers when I wrote it this morning, was um, the kid from Devin Vassell, who went number 11 in the Spurs. Uh, I, I, I had him ranked top four in my, in my draft. Uh, they're, they're, they got a bunch of players. Derek White plays off the ball. Um, that dude just had such stunning metrics. He understands how to play, how to win can really shoot, can really guard. I think the Spurs are going to love him. And, and they need him. They need guys like that. And the way he shoots the ball makes it harder to contest his shot. And he's a 40% plus three-point shooter for two straight years in college. And it was a three-star guy coming out. He was a three-star recruit that went number 11. Uh, he, his work ethic is, is legendary in Tallahassee and very bright and also – like, I think Pop's going to love him. He's so, I told you this, I saw him in person. He just can't stop hugging people. Not during COVID, you can't do it. But you, you, I hear that personality is, is so effervescent that I think Pop is going to anoint him like, hey, we got to build around this guy. He's going to be a keeper for us long-term. And so that would be my guess is the one guy that could do it. And who knows what G League guys will do it. I don't know yet. All right, question 27 is where's Gerard Hector? Let's do this. <laughs> Here it comes. There he is. That was funny. <laughs> uh, I want to get Gerard. Gerard. What do you think of the Pelicans, Gerard? Uh, like you, I don't love the non-shooting from the bigs. And I, for them, it's a Zion question for me, right? Like, I think I know what Brandon Ingram could be stealing-wise. Um, we, we're starting to see a little bit of that. I just don't know about the health of Zion and then, also the progression of his game going out, right? Is he going to start shooting threes? Is he going to, you know, just sort of bury his game? Um, and then I don't love, like, their lack of not, not having Drew Holiday, right? Like, I like Lonzo a lot, but I want, you know, I, I want some more back there. And so and to your point with Bledsoe not being sure if he's going to stay, 
Now they're talented enough, right? So if 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 Zion's healthy and plays, we got seventy two games. If he plays sixty five, um, they're going to be right there in that eight seven mix, like scrapping it out with Memphis and whoever else is down at the bottom. Phoenix, I guess maybe you know. So it's not out of the question. Alonzo will be tremendous. He could be. He could be. I mean, the question it's, it's is Rick. almost out of the question. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big Lazo fan. I loved him coming out of UCLA. I believed in him when he was really bad for the Lakers. Uh, I know for sure his shot can get better, and it has some. But he can't make shots. Very. He's like Rubio. Yeah. He's really, yeah. not a guy you can trust as yeah. a shooter. Yeah. Uh, and he's and he's got to want to defend. And I think he will. I, I think he can be a, a plus defender. He isn't okay. always. I think with Stan, they're going to really focus on defense, which is why I think they brought in the bigs they brought in. They're, they're going to try to build around defense first, and I credit them for that. It's, nonetheless, it's going to come at a cost to some degree. We'll see what happens in the, in the preseason. If other guys can step up, they have Wendell Gabriel, uh, who, who Henry likes a lot. Maybe he can provide some answers. But um, Lonzo, it, it, he's hoping to be a starter. I'm telling you, he, he's not far oh, yeah. removed from not being a starter in this league. Which is crazy, right? Because he was what was he the number, number one two. or two pick? Number two. I mean, so it's like, uh, yikes, yikes. Can you hear my dog barking? <laughs> yes. I don't. I don't hear it. That's fine. She would really like to join us. Uh, pardon me, one minute. If no one <laughs> yeah. All right. There was, uh, what do you tell me? Your ceiling floor on the Nets, Gerard? I, I'm with you on the fact that the Nets are all about Durant. If Durant is what he can be with, like, where he would have aged out, you know, because aging, of course, makes your game change. So if he's that version of himself, they're, they're going to be a 48 to 52 win team and, you know, be very good. But if he's not that, then, you know, they're going to be struggling like everybody else in that, in that bottom tier, bottom rung. Now, they do have talented guys on that roster. Uh, Dimwitty's talented, Laverse talented, Allen's talented. You know, those, their young guys are talented, but they are what they've been the past several years, which is a scrapping 8-7 seed. And, and what about the Knicks? I want to get your opinion on that, too. <laughs> Sorry, Randy. Um, I, I said it in the chat. Look, with the new management and the CAA guys, they want to potentially become a place where they get free agents, right? And with that CAA uh, pipeline, that may happen at some point. Not happening anytime soon. So instead of wasting these draft picks like Barrett and Knox and Nilakina, work on player development and get those guys to be competent at something, right? Like yeah. they've got they've got the measurables and talent. Like Kevin Knox should not be this bad. Like yeah. make him decent at something. Yeah. Make RJ Barrett decent at something. Nilakina decent at something. Then guess what? Then they become trade pieces. If you don't want to keep them and keep working up that scale, I, I would only tweak this. Excuse me, Henry. One second. No, go ahead. You can expect more than decency from top five picks, Agreed. right? Top Agreed. eight picks. So we need to be really, really good at something. Shooting, defense, defensive work, basketball IQ, toughness, hustle. Guys, we draft you a top 10. You've got to be really good at you know, the two or three things. Well, now you're a starter, right? Four or five things. Now you're an all-star, okay? But they need to be asking for dollars, not pennies. So those guys are talented guys. Right, Henry. I agree. I, you know, let, let's say you're a little kid and you go to the carnival and you play skee ball or the little, and eventually you end up with those tickets, right? Then you go over the little counter and you can buy a bunch of plastic crap with those tickets mm -hmm. or candy or whatever. But those kids, right? They're standing there. If you have 431 tickets, your whole mental game is how do I make sure I don't leave here with one ticket? That would be a crisis. You got to do the math to fit 431. That's James Dolan, right? His. <laughs> Whole time running the Knicks. Like if he has a little cap room, he's just gonna jam another player in there, right? Like, like so now the idea is um, like I have a friend who works for the Knicks now. I'm like, who's managing this? Who's managing James Dolan? Who's gonna keep like that like what are the odds? This is my question for you too. What are the odds they finish the season with the cap room they have presently? <laughs> Less than 10%. <laughs> Because that's just not his MO, right? Like, yeah. to your point, Henry, it's I have to do something. I love what they've done in terms of the signings because they're not locked into any bad deal. <laughs> Next year, all the yeah. capital teams there again to go after Giannis, which is what Dolan has in his head 1,000%. They're not going to get him, but that's what's in his brain. This is the test of the new regime. Is, are, do they actually have Dolan handcuffed in a closet somewhere, or is he going to get excited about somebody in February? And that's that. <laughs> can, I, can I just ask one thing? Can yeah. Are we going to allow Gerard to say he loves their signing, loved their signings uh, because they didn't give themselves any kind of cap trouble when one of those signings was mm. Michael K. Gilchrist? 
Mm. Oh, right. Yes. I mean, okay. when I say but Austin Rivers, I don't, I don't, I don't mean yeah. I love the <laughs> I don't mean I love the talent. I just mean you're not killing yourself. You <laughs> loved you loved parts of their off season, granted, and you're wise to do so. But I'll tell you what. I mean, I, I don't know what this means, but uh, I can tell you for a fact that um, William Wesley is literally like a father to Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Like they've known each other. Oh, I didn't know that for a oh, very course, long. Well, time. Well, there you go. I didn't even think about that. Of course, the Kentucky connection. And, yeah. and really quick before we go, coach, you mentioned Aaron Gordon as someone who can move. Yeah. I have intel that would suggest that that is a likely possibility. Let's go. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I just study in rosters and like, I just don't think it's working out or anything. That, that's about all I could say. But that, 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 that things are happening that would suggest hmm, he might be somewhere that says, okay, we got to do something different for you, buddy. So, yeah. Interesting. Let's and talk more about know. that next time, Gerard. Yeah. <laughs> right, make a note of that. Make a note. Okay. Make a note. We have a minute. Right. Any any other uh, any rookies, Gerard, that uh, that you think can really jump up this year? Um, the Normally they don't I, do it. No, I mean Wiseman and and Okongwu are, are like the bigs, like the big guys. Uh, but no one to me is like. Ooh, let's put it this way: I don't like any of them as much as I like Michael Porter Jr. <laughs> like I that. actually, I think Obi Toppin can, like, he'll get minutes, right? Like, and and his a more defined role, like. He can hit Maybe. open threes and run around by the rim. Like that, that's stuff you can do in the NBA. Yeah, he'll dunk the ball a lot. He'll dunk the ball. <laughs> he will. He's super athletic, man. That super guy's athletic. fun to watch. But yeah. but I won't be watching him. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. <laughs> All these games in a cramped schedule, like there's 20, 18 teams I really follow. They just Henry, yeah. I think that's why they didn't release the second half of the schedule, right? Is because they know they're going to have a bunch of cancellations in the first half, so we're going to hopefully make it up on the back end. Oh, that's reimagine. Point. Yeah. All right, we got to go. Thank you, everybody. Everybody, thank you, David. Thank Be you, John. Thank you, Judy. See you guys.